Welcome back to Free Media, I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. MSNBC's Stephanie Rule expressed frustration with Americans who she says are just confused about the state of the economy. Let's watch. Target says it is cutting prices on 5,000 essential items, things like milk, butter, pet food. Wendy's is now offering a $3 breakfast deal, and rivals like McDonald's are offering new, lower-priced value meals. Here to discuss an old friend of mine, Austin Goolsby, president and CEO of the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago. We need an economic explainer. People are confused. They're exhausted, but they're also doing quite well. <laughs> Everyone's doing quite well, Robbie. Why? What's the big deal? Why is everybody so upset about the economy? I mean, I'm making my six-figure <laughs> income to be a talking head on MSNBC. And you can swing by uh, Wendy's on your way home and get as much food as you want. Uh, yeah, this is described as this is what this is copium. This is when um, you know the talking heads on TV, you know, try to convince the little people, the the, the normies, the the working people, that everything's fine. What are you? You even complaining about you know how much could a banana possibly cost ten dollars that famous Lucille Bluth um, clip and uh, this uh, this figure has been uh, has been doing a lot of this lately I think we reacted to another clip of hers from uh, a couple weeks ago when um, when uh, when she had on a guest who was explaining exactly why the economic policy she was advocating would in fact lead to even higher prices um, but yeah people are not look people don't need an economic exp explainer. Um, prices are higher. Inflation is quite historically high right now. Um, it, it has not come down substantially. Um, food, gas, and other things are still very expensive. Um, I would argue that that's not a mystery given um, just like how much money was pumped into the economy by the government under both Biden and Trump, under whoever's in charge in terms of the, the CARES Act, the COVID stuff, and a bunch of other things. Economics tells us that this, you know, when you just, the government spends a lot of money, that causes prices to go up. So that's what we're seeing. People hate it. They blame Biden for it. And mainstream media pundits hate that, but them's the breaks. Yeah, he uh, entered office with, I think, a 1.5% inflation rate. It spiked up to over 9%. And even now, as they claim inflation's coming down, it's still at 3 to 3.5%. 3 and the fundamental conceit is the idea that because the inflationary rate is lower, that people are going to be paying less for their goods. But the truth is that prices are still increasing, just not at the 9% rate that they were during Biden's first and second year in office. So people are still having to face these continuing price increases every single day on all of these goods that they need um, to, to basically survive. I mean, whether it's food, housing, uh, gasoline, all of these things they need to get to and from work. And uh, that's, that's real. There was a graph that was going viral last week on social media um, that showed the average real wage increase under Trump versus Biden. Mm -hmm. And you basically see the line spike under Trump mm -hmm. and stay incredibly stagnant under Biden because even though there have been technically some, uh, some wage increases under Biden, they have been completely eaten up by inflation. So of course people don't feel like they're doing well when their real wages are either the same or less than they enjoyed just four years ago. People wanna feel like every single year they're making a little bit more money and instead they've actually made less. Yeah, I mean, I feel it. Gro grocery prices right now are exorbitant. You go to the grocery store, you feel like you don't even buy anything and it's like $300 every time. Um, and I know, peop you know people, uh, more progressive left people, I say, well, this is like corporate greed or something. But then I'm like, well, okay, even if we accept that corporations are greedy, were they not greedy before? Are they like, why are they being more greedy all of a sudden? That doesn't really seem to explain their behavior. There's probably something else going on, which is that like our economy has been fundamentally wrecked by, I would argue, all of this government spending, um, by regulation and other things. And people are understandably and justifiably upset about it. Um, and then there's a lot of stuff like, yeah, yeah you mentioned um, um, housing costs. Um, a lot of the, the most, um, uh, at the areas of the, the economy where like hu human labor is, is difficult to replace, um, the, like, uh, like childcare, those kinds of stuff, e education, um, the prices of that going up astronomically and responses to that in places like, for instance, the District of Columbia. Reason actually just did a great documentary on this for 
forever, the District of Columbia has been trying to require um, daycare teachers, teachers for young children, to have like degrees in education. You know, this is this is an important job that you know family members can can fulfill. Your 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 mother retired, you know, who did daycare. Your kids could take a part time job doing this. This is not something you need a master's in education to do. And the city that's not the city's view. The city's view is you should have to study and get a master's in education to to uh, to take care of to receive money to be paid to uh, to take care of kids. That kind of stuff just wildly drives up the cost of all of this. It's insane and it's ruinous, but that's life under the policies of democratic officials. Yeah, and, and it also puts kids in danger, by the way, because when you reduce the market of people who are available to provide child care, you end up with a higher ratio of children to caregiver, um, which is how you get daycare abuse, honestly. So that's really a horrific policy. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you guys did that documentary. Um, and then going back to the economy writ large, I mean, you're exactly right. Grocery prices are outrageous. This cannot be explained by corporate greed, okay? Grocery stores have some of the smallest profit margins of any industry. They have consistently remained around two to 4% since both before and after the pandemic. And people also don't consider that Specifically, when you're talking about a grocery store, there are a ton of different inputs that you have to consider when you're determining how much you're going to sell your food for. You have the supply chain uh, that includes delivery drivers. You have the farmers, like the production side of it. Um, you have all of your employees who actually work at the grocery store. You have to account for infl inflation every step of the way. So the fact that grocery stores are making record profits are, is not true in real terms, right? From a profit margin percentage aspect, they haven't really improved much at all. And then the other one that people constantly cite are energy companies and specifically oil companies. Well, this is no secret either. When the Biden administration canceled a bunch of, bunch of federal leases at the beginning of his administration, and then uh, basically sent the signal to oil and gas companies and coal companies that they were gonna put them out of business over the next four years. Of course, any reasonable person who's running a company is going to have to consider as uh, in a, from a futures perspective of, am I even going to have a company four years from now? Am I going to be able to continue to produce the same amount of energy that I currently produce if this guy is promising to regulate me? So you can't sit there and say, I'm going to put you out of business. And then when they inevitably increase costs to account for Greed, that, those greedy yeah, sons how dare of, they? yeah. How dare they try to survive as I promise to shut them down? Incredible. All right, we'll be back with more free media right after this.